Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be talking about dynamic versus static linking, some of the security shortfalls of Windows, the difference between DLL and executable files, and why it is so. To start with, we need to know some basic stuff, like what is a linker? Linking is a process where all of the references made within a program to external libraries, external functions, have to be resolved before the program can actually be ready for execution. The application that does this is called the linker, and it's usually the last stage of the compilation process for programs. Now there are two approaches to linking, and each of them have their ups and downs. So one is static linking, where you link everything when the program is compiled, and effectively create a copy of each and every function that is referenced within the executable code itself. The major downside to this is that if you have 20 programs currently running, each of which reference the same libraries, and you load up all of that, it takes up a lot of memory space. That's 20 times the memory space. The way Windows gets around this problem is by using what we call dynamic linking, which means each library can have its own memory space and exist independently of other executables. And if executables want to access the library, they can use something called dynamic linking and share the memory space. Sounds pretty efficient, right? But malware authors have been exploiting this technique for ages now on Windows using DLL injection, which you might have heard of, and a lot of other techniques through which they can do their dirty work using a separate executable or a system executable. By the way, if you're one of those people who relies on Task Manager to find malware, this is something that you should be aware of, because if a malicious DLL is injected into a legitimate process, you will not see a malware process running in memory, because it's not. It's a legitimate executable, it could very well be an essential Windows operating system one, that would be carrying out the malicious activities because it's actually executing functions that are part of a malicious DLL file. So I think that kind of covers the basics. Now I'm going to try to do a real-time demonstration using the new Eternal Petya or the Blue Petya, which used a similar technique. Of course, for this um, test, I'm gonna, just going to be using Run DLL, but this can happen with any Windows process. So first, we're going to open up Command Prompt. Ooh, but I think I need admin privileges. So let's just do a search and run it as admin. Just change directory to desktop. And now all we have to do is grab our malware file, which should be somewhere in here, ransomware. Yes search for blue petya now it's right there so now we have it on our desktop now all we have to do is find the entry point and then execute it using run dll 32.exe which is for 32-bit programs so dll's themselves can't be executed because they don't have a main function but what you can do is execute specific functions inside of the DLL file. And the way you can do that is using the function name or ordinal, which is what we'll be using. In order to figure this out, I will use dependency walker just to get the ordinal because I don't think I remember. Let's see. Now once this is loaded, we do get the ordinal, the function, and the entry point. As you can see, the name's not available, so we'll just have to go by the ordinal, which is one. So I'm just gonna type hash one, and if I'm correct, this should be the right command. Before we execute it, though, I will open Process Explorer because we need to see what's going on and show you that there are no malicious processes in memory while the malware is executing. Okay, so that's good. Let's just pin it here and have this. And now we should be ready to execute.
And there you go, instantly we had run DLL pop up. And we can't see the path right now because this is not running as admin, but that's another little tweak that we have to do to get this working right, because I suck. But now you should be able to see the exact path, which there you go. It shows you the command line that is run DLL 32, blue Petya. So this is what we have in order to figure out what DLL is exactly being run by the system because the process is run DLL and it's perfectly legitimate. But because of dynamic linking, just because a process is legitimate doesn't necessarily mean what it's doing is not malicious. There are obviously a lot of other problems associated with dynamic linking, some of which is referenced as DLL hell. But then again, um, it also comes with the benefit of efficiency, and that's why security is a never-ending problem. Things aren't just that simple. A lot of people just talk about it like, why don't you just make the OS secure? You, you can't. The more you increase security, the less available and easy to use it is for the user. And this is a perpetual problem. As long as we have systems, we'll have security issues. The same way security is a perpetual issue in real life, there'll always be people willing to take advantage of others. And the same way, that's never going to go away in real life. It's never going to go away with computer systems. It's just a matter of how it evolves and what we deal with technically. Now, let me just restart the system to show you what happens when we do that. And there you go, repairing file system on C. This is the initial process for Petya. I'm just going to reset it again. And we should see the ransom message. Malware destroyed the system without ever having a malicious process in memory. And of course, in this case, I just executed it with run DLL32, but that could have been any Windows process and that DLL could have been injected anywhere to do the exact same thing. So I hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Thank you for watching. And before I go, I should do this really cool shout out for my Patreons because I have a few of them now and I've never kept my promises of mentioning them in videos, which is really lame of me. So WinGamer, thank you very much. And a really special thank you to Danoct1, who is a really cool YouTuber. You should definitely check out his channel. He's been a Patreon for a really long time and I haven't gotten the chance to mention him, but here it is. I have kind of revamped the Patreon page, so please check it out if you want to help the channel. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.